Hey everyone, welcome to the Retro Emulation Nation. For today, we're going to do something a little bit different. So instead of the usual quick play videos, I'm going to talk about the Sharp X68000. Specifically, how to emulate it, how to launch it through LaunchBox, and also how to create virtual hard disk images. So before we go into the technical details, I'm just going to give a quick demonstration. This is Cho Rensha 68K, one of the best shoot shooting games on the X68000. So I'm just going to launch it here from LaunchBox. If you notice, in the notification tray over here, the HD BZ light is constantly blinking. That's because the game has actually already been installed onto a virtual hard disk, which is why you see it coming up real quickly. And as you can see, there is no impact to the game launching or to gameplay. It will load exactly as how it would load if from the original floppy disk image only a lot faster. Okay, let's just quit that. So, what are the things we need to get this running in LaunchBox and how to, how to run the 68,000 images on a Windows 10 PC? So the first thing you need is the XM6 Pro 68K emulator. This is the heart of the entire thing and this is what is required to run the X68000 games. So by default, whenever we download the X68000 game like this, it shows up as a dim image, .dim dim. So these are virtual floppy disk images and like real floppy disks, they take, they take a very long time to load. So how are we going to fix that? So I'm just going to do something quick over here. So we need to have two applications, VFIC and edit disk. VFIC is a tool to convert the floppy disk dim image into something that we can use in the virtual hard disk image. So all you need to do is launch VFIC. And see this little window appearing over here? So under the format here. So what are we reading from? Or rather what we want to export it to. So for X68000, we want it to be in XDF format. So we just drag and drop the dim image here. And as you can see, the XDF image is automatically generated here. So what do we do next? So we go to the Edit Disk application. Now, I've already created um, blank virtual hard disk images. I'll share the link at the bottom later. So this is blank.hdf. This is already a pre-formatted 10 megabyte virtual hard disk. I'm just going to drop it in my downloads folder here so we can see how it works. So just drag and drop the blank.hdf into edit disk. Click run. Now, it will ask you to select a profile. By default, it should be able to detect what sort of hard disk image it is. So um, the Sharp X68000 runs on an operating system called the Human 68K. So just click OK. And this is what, uh, what will appear on your screen as well. So I've already pre-populated it with the boot files required to get the Sharp X68000 running with the emulator. So the essentials are always three files, human.sys, command.x, and config.sys. So we've already created the XDF image earlier, so I'm just going to rename it as disk1, and I will just drop it here. Next, you'll need a file called autoexec.bat. So the human 68k operating system is actually based on DOS. So as long as you know how to use autoexec.bat, it will work. So just right click, I use Notepad++. I highly recommend you install it when you're working with batch files or scripts or anything like that because it's easy to read it rather than the normal Notepad that comes with Windows. So I'll provide a link at the bottom for Notepad++ as well. So this is the autoexec.bat. So we require this utility here, 2HD boot. So as you can see in the disk explorer, we have 2HD boot.x. So it actually uses this application to 
read the XDF files and create and mount virtual uh, floppy disk drives when the uh, XM6 Pro 68K emulator runs. So the first line must always be 2HD boot dash dollar. You can this de defines which memory bank you want it to run in the Sharp X68000. So um, I just leave it at bank four because I found that this gives me the best results. Um, there is no need to change this. Dash A. So this is the first floppy disk drive, and dash B is the second floppy disk drive because all Sharp X68000 machines have dual floppy disk drives. So in this case, because we do not need a second floppy disk drive, we'll just delete it. So just have A, dash A, disk one dot XDF matching how I've renamed the file over here. So I will just save it. Let me just drag and drop it. And there you go. This blank dot HDF will run in the XM68 emulator. How do we confirm that? I am just going to drag and drop this blank.hdf to xm6 over here. And as you can see in the command line here, 2hd boot, this one.xdf. So it's already mounting the virtual floppy disk image. And it's going through the motion of actually booting up the game. And there you go. So this is a very quick and easy way to get the game started very quickly in the XM6 emulator using a hard disk image. Okay, let's take care of all this and we'll try again. Now, what happens if it's a multi-disc game. So it's very common for a lot of games to come on multiple floppy disks. So let's take Aqualess for example. So as you can see, I have a bunch of all these HDF images already created. So if I were to drop this into the disk editor, You will see that there's a disk one, disk two, and disk three dot xdf. So how would the auto exec dot bat work? So let me just drop it out, so we can actually read the file and see how it works. So as you can see, it's just a simple one liner, two hd boot correlates to this tool over here. Dash dollar four start the the ram bank, and you can see it's dash a disk one dot xdf dash b disk two dot xdf dash a disk 3 dot xdf so what does this mean so it will boot from the first disk first start from the first floppy disk drive and then it will seek the data from the second floppy disk drive so and in when the intro is done it will switch back to the first floppy disk drive to look for the third disk so let's just launch aqualess So this one on A, this two on B, this three on A. And it loads. And in within a few seconds I might add. So let's just spend a few seconds on the thing. Not very good at the game, but I haven't figured out how to really control it yet. So there it is. Now, of course, this method is not foolproof, it doesn't work on all games. And Aqualess is one of the examples where you can just put A, B, A. So you, you might need to do your research online because not all games boot in the same manner. This is the most common method, of course, but for this three, sometimes you might need to put B instead to run. So again, do your research or just do trial and error with the auto exec.bat. 
So everything you need to insert a file or export a file to your HDF image through the disk explorer, you just drag and drop it with your Windows Explorer, it's fine. So far, um, I have had no problems with any of these HDF files that I have generated. Now, uh, again, to repeat it, this does not always work for everything. So if I were to look at something else like Granada, this is another great game on the X68000, but it's very difficult to get this running on the virtual hard disk image. And I to show why. So as you can see, I have the standard things, human.sys, command.x, config.sys. That's standard. But how, however, you notice there's only this 2.xdf and this 3.xdf. Now, the reason for this is because um, because all sharp x68000 games are distributed on floppy disks, sometimes the disk one is just an intro. And after the intro is done, it will ask you to uh, switch to the data disk anyway. So instead of going through all that hassle, I take out disk one and just have this two and this three. And it will still boot and it will just all it does is just skip the intro. So as you can see, is the first disk will be this three, second disk this two. Why is this way? It's just how the game is programmed. So it wants disk three first before loading disk two. So because I do not have disk one in the virtual hard disk image, it will bypass the intro sequence altogether. There you go, the Wolf Team logo. Missing is the intro sequence, but I feel that's fine instead of going through the hassle of trying to figure it out because uh, unlike Aqualab, it's not a simple process of going through uh, the first what we image and the second and the third. And that is pretty much it as far as the basics of getting this Sharp X68000 games running is a concern. So before we end this video, I'm just going to try to find something that has a little bit different. Let's look at um, Midgard's goal. I think this was something different. So as you can see, it has a bunch of other XDF images. And if I look into the auto bat, let me just drag it down. It should be different as well. So I won't be covering these more complicated things because um, I think this comes with a bit more experience. So just play with the, the methods I have shown and demonstrated earlier. And once you've gained more experience, maybe you can try out using the 2HD SIM tool instead. So what this does is it plays with the sequence of the floppy disk drive. So like um, this would might work for Granada. I'm not sure. I did not have the time to to test it out. So you can you might actually get full games running like this. And if I let's try another one. Let's look at genocide. Yep. Notice the extra folder here. Let's look at the auto exec that file. So this is a bit more different as well. So as you see, there's no. As you can see, there's no XDF image here. So it's substitute A to A Games 2. So what this does is supplant A Games 2 as default A. Go to Genocide 2 and run command.r. So again, this is a bit more complicated, so I'm not gonna go into that. So that's it for getting the Sharp X68000 uh, games running on virtual hard disk images. So far, I have not encountered anything that needs no more than 10 megabytes. Of course, I have not tried with those 6 disk games. So, uh, most of the time, uh, even though the game is only 2 or 3 floppy disks, the total data size is around 
two megabytes at most. Unfortunately, because these are all virtual hard disk images, each file clocks at 9.95 megabytes, even though only one or two megabytes is it's used. But I feel that with the cheap hard disk we have today, this is a good trade-off for fast loading time. Okay, thank you for watching and subscribe and follow this channel for more quick play videos and more tutorials down the line. Thank you.